Oh, I could, huh? What's up, guys? I'm trying to find a spot, so I'm about to move. Where, where you got me going? Oh, you so right. You got a chair? What's up, everybody? Happy Thursday. Back-to-back -back lives with me. How lucky are y'all? And I got a special guest coming on. Um, let's see. Hey, you can lock it. Thank you. Can you lock my Thank you. Happy Thursday. It's almost the weekend. I know we just had a weekend, but they don't last long enough. Even with the three-day weekend, I still was like, it's Tuesday already. I, I don't know what happened. So I did a wash and go. While I'm waiting for my guests, I'll tell you all about my hair. My bangs have grown out, and I'm just not feeling it right now. So until I get them cut, I don't know what I'm going to do. But the curls are cute. What did I use? Um, Rescue by Aunt Jackie. And it's a conditioner. And what else did I use? um the main choice but i know next time i need to i'm i can't wait to use my organic products that uh are here so i'll keep y'all updated it says my guest joined but where's she at I'm right here, girl. <laughs> I love the braid. Thank you. Wait, I had to make sure I was like, is my girl with a filter? Because it's like, my rule is if my if, if a girl doesn't have the filter, we're not doing the filters. No, I'm going to pick one. You want one? Okay, yeah, let's do one. What we got? What filter let's we see. got, girl? Because I be, girl, a girl be wanting her filter. I got well, a I'm, good one, girl. It's called no filter, ironically. And I like, let me see. <laughs> Where's she at? Where's this girl? There's so many good ones, girl. Wait, this one's good. I, oh, oh, you got okay. a little sparkle. I, I, See, she gave me a little that. contour. She, she's a she she's a she's a cute girl. Okay. Well, thank you for joining us, Lenora. I appreciate you being on with for us. Sure. I'm happy I'm to be here. I was listening to your um, EP all day this morning. I was like, dang, I love you got a nice flow to you. Like, I Thank love you. It. I Thank love you. Because I did it for us. It's called Girls because it's literally like songs like just for us. Like, I knew when we were like, what are we going to name this? Like, I knew once the songs was just kind of writing themselves, I was like, this got to be called Girls. Because every girl has like been through the things in that in that project. Like, no matter who she is. Right. I love relatable music and then I love when it I could just put it in and let it ride the whole time. Exactly. So that's what I was excited about. I appreciate that. I wanted it to be that kind of like straight through kind of ride, you know, kind of kind of vibe. So yeah, I love that project. It's fun too. Especially yeah. for the summer. Especially the visuals and stuff. Like your looks are dope. The Thank um, you. exciting to watch. So I was like I appreciate it. I can kind of complain about how you, you know, yeah. What's, what's your creative process like? I know you wanted it for girls, but uh -huh. how um like how did I, it kind of like come about? Yeah, come about. So that project it was funny because so that whole project girls was produced by one person, Polyester the Saint. He's out in LA, right? I had met Polly prior to recording the album. We never set out to make an album. I was just going to LA I heard that we should work. We, should we work. linked up in the studio, and then we made one song. It's called They Say on the album. That was the first song we ever made. And I was just like, oh, you on some, like, on some other <laughs> stuff, like, like me. But, like, I felt like we was both unicorns, like, just completely defying, like, what constitutes, like, what a song should sound like now. You know what I mean? I like to defy rules and boxes and genres and structure. So he did, too, basically... 
we just would get in. I would come out there and then um, we would do a song or two, right? And then eventually I was like, can we do this album? And he was like, yeah, let's do it. I never put out a body of work before that either. So wow. I had only put out singles. And so right. I knew with him, because it was so left sounding to me, which I liked the two of us sound left together. I was like, it needs to be its own thing, you know, mm -hmm. like its own body of work. And it was literally just my experiences, girl. It was like me having like situationships, um, you know, not being in a relationship. What we call right. our whole face, girl. <laughs> it was it was whole bags. Somebody said this is boring in the comments. Okay, we're talking about whole bags now, so <laughs> it's fine. You know, you can't please everybody. He could kindly leave sir no like, you can't you can't kindly leave i just thought it was funny that as soon as i saw it i started saying talking about hope <laughs> but that's that's crazy but it's music is is so much music out and like i said when you can relate i'm all i don't mind circling back and listening to putting something on repeat especially exactly. the vibe you give off is just different and there's so many uh women who are recording artists who sing and stuff right. But you have to have something about you because I'm not – everything is subjective. So I right, right, right. But there's certain people who, like, you know, they have it all. They can sing, dance, and whatever. Mm -hmm. Something's missing. Right. But, like, I enjoy that, you know, this was your first body of work. Even though you have singles out, I, I you kind of shocked me with that because I didn't know that. You seem like yeah. you – uh, always pushing out stuff just based on the quality you gave in the first right time. it was important and that's the virgo in me girl i'm a virgo too so you know how Vir <laughs> you a virgo so you, know how we are. so you know how we are about things being ready and things being yeah. but with this i had to say like you know what i'm like we're damn proud of this i wrote the whole project Polly produced the whole project so i was like we damn proud of it let's put it out let's not overthink this and I was just grateful that so many people, like, vibed with it. You know, I knew it was a little bit uh, left of center of what was currently out, you know. And I was okay with that. I was like, this is going to be the project where people go back and, um, and, and listen to it later. You know, I felt like it was a little bit, like, just ahead, really, honestly. Um, right, right. But, yeah, I, I think people definitely can go back and listen to it. And that's the beauty in, like, music. You always go back and listen to it with fresh ears and something else resonate with you. That it that didn't before, right? You'll pick up something that you didn't hear the first time. Mm -hmm. When did, you, or when did you like recognize like you could sing or you enjoyed it? You like found your voice. Um, I feel like I've been singing ever since I could talk. But when I really, really knew was, um, I went to this like Christian private school for like pre K and kindergarten and stuff, and we had to sing like this song. I'm going up yonder at this like at the graduation, my kindergarten graduation. So I got the solo or whatever. That was my first time singing in public. I mean, it's kindergarten graduation. <laughs> so I like go back and I like tell my mama, I'm like, you know, mama, like they check, they picked me to do the solo. And she was like, okay, this is what you got to do. Like on this part, you got to growl. Like on I'm going up yonder and then watch everybody going to like go crazy. So I did it on the stage and everybody stood up, started going crazy. I was like, I could just, I could deal with this forever. Like, <laughs> Just like performing for people and seeing them like physically react to it, like move them like that. I was like, I want to do this forever. Like, mm -hmm. but then I started, uh, I, I got into opera after that. So okay. I, I had a, an interesting way that I got here. But still, I just I always knew I wanted to move the people through through song. How was opera? How was that like experience? It was cool. It was a big part of me. Like, I started studying when I was, like, 13 intensively. And then I went, because I went to a high, a high school for the performing and visual arts in Houston. And mm -hmm. then I went to a school called Loyola in New Orleans. And I studied vocal performance there. But when I got I um, I didn't want to sing, only sing, oh, shit, is, my, is this spinning? I see you now. Okay. I didn't just want to sing somebody else's composition. You know what I mean? I was like, well, what if I, like, compose my own stuff and sort of found my own, you know, voice? So that's kind of how I started mm -hmm. getting into singing other styles of music. It's just writing and uh, jazz improvisation. 
I like that. That's not you don't hear it too often that people come from like opera. And that's a different you gotta really sing. That's a lot on your girl, it's a lot. Like you hear how lax I'm talking to you now. Like that was my thing with opera. Like my voice always has to be in line. It's a very rigorous, like unforgiving career. And I was oh, like, true. not for me. Yeah. The older yeah. I got, I was like, not for me. Like, as I went through life, I was just like, it's kind of lit over here, just writing songs <laughs> and, you know, talking loud, right, smoking weed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's lit over here, so. Right, right. You, um, are you originally from Houston? Yep. Born and raised. So a lot of that is uh, embedded in, like, your music, too, and your style. Yeah. Uh, as for sure. I definitely take elements, like, you know, of course, screw, screw culture is huge here everywhere you know internationally people are taken from dj screw um and being inspired by his work so that's definitely present in the in the music as well as like just you know slang stuff that we say here you know ho is a noun a verb <laughs> a, right. like a way of life like all of that in houston <laughs> so it's 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 all those things uh that definitely inspire me like houston is like very much what has been known as a hip-hop culture a rap city but i think that like you can see a lot of the different artists that are just so eclectic coming out of houston that that's that's changing we're all inspired but everybody is kind of coming forth with something new to offer which i love it's exciting like houston really is where it's at everybody coming here now i've been once and i was sad that i couldn't enjoy it the way i wanted it to like i wasn't there for too long but it definitely was cool to, you know, be in that environment. You can just tell when you're in a different space, you know? Right. Exactly. Um, where are you? It, it, well, I'm um, based in California. Where I'm in L.A. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I was in L.A. to, rec uh, you know, recording girls and spend a lot of time out there. I like L.A. I, I like it. I couldn't live there like that, but I like it. <laughs> like, not for an extended amount of time. Right, right. You know, um, but that's just for me. I'm, I'm like, I'm finally admitting to myself that I'm country. Like, I was in denial about it for a very long time. I was like, me? <laughs> I don't live in the country. But a rooster's crow every morning, like, <laughs> it's country. Hey, y'all, in the racing. comments, too. I see a lot of people that I love in the comments. I see my cousin Kristen. I see Destiny in the comments. Hey, y'all. Um... And then I see you always, I feel like you always have a different hairstyle. What's your I favorite? Do. What's your favorite go-to style? Girl, can I tell you the truth, though? Like, honesty moment. And I was like, I don't want to leave with this. And then it'd be, like, so deep. But the truth <laughs> is, like, I felt like there was alignment happening when this even happened, when this came about um, with High Pair Magazine, right? Because I grew up looking at High Pair Magazine, and looking at the styles and bringing them to people to braid my hair like that, do my hair like that in a beauty shop. And hair is such an important aspect of, like, our identities as Black women, especially, like, me as a Black woman. Um, you know, it is so much of my life is rooted around hair, like, special moments defined by a hairstyle, you know? And, like, for the album, right, on the album is three versions of me. I'm the same person, but it's three different hairstyles. You got like a black mullet, um, a little blonde bob, and then my normal hair that like is my Lenny hair. That's the little mm -hmm. shag kind of fringe, fair faucet uh, right. kind of 70s vibe that I love. And that hair has kind of become, it's the centerpiece of the album, the, the middle character, um, because that that's the hair that's like synonymous with me as Lenora. Um, but I wanted those three sides on there because when I was writing the project, I wrote it over a span of a year. And like, I was in like three different spaces almost oh, a lot of times. Like I was like in a rebellious, like F these everybody type of, you know what I'm saying? It's like type of energy, like Here's just focused, like in my bag, very focused, um, very like, just not really wanting to consider, honestly, a man's feelings. That's where I was at. Like, I don't really care. Um, and then I was like in a moment where I was like, I, I'm enjoying the company of a male, a little bit more coy, a little bit more playful, but still want to dip when I want to. 
And then there was the side of like me being booed up because I met my boyfriend at the end of writing the album. So I wanted it to be three different characters. And then Age. I also, right. And everyone like gives me a different vibe. Like the black little shag kind of, you know, Joan Jet mullet give me a different vibe. Soon as I put it on, I start acting different. Y'all know how it is <laughs> when you put on a different, because I really do put on my, I call it my hats. When you, right. you want to feel a different type of way, depending on the vibe that you're on that night or day. So right, it was right. such an important part of that album. I wanted these three specific styles made for these three different phases throughout. And then after the project, and I never talked about this like publicly, honestly, but after I put the project out in January, because it was always just wigs, 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 and just stuff, stuff, stuff. I went through this moment where I started boycotting wigs, girl. I was like, I don't want to wear wigs no more. I don't want to wear it. I wanted to, I just wanted to feel my hair and I wanted to, it was almost a moment of liberation and not wearing wigs. So I was wearing my, just my fro out for a while and just learning how to care for my hair and, and give it attention and give it love and give it patience and nurture it. Um, so I was doing that, and then I braided up because I was in Tulum over the weekend, girl. But <laughs> I've been just very much into just Afro textures, um, just experimenting with my hair right now. And I think it's because I'm moving into a different just feeling of life and era musically. Like the music I'm making right now for the next project is is very different than uh, girls. I mean, it's it's still me, but it's moving to a different, you know. I like that though. The like you could be versatile. You you people want to see the girl side of you, and they have that. And then you know, moving forward, your next project is something different. It's still like you, but you right. are you can give off you know any side that you're feeling or experimenting. And I love that you kind of during your project you went through a wave of like, I'm sick of him. I'm cool, and I'm gonna do my own thing and be in my own space. And then right. you know. Down the boo and right, Bob. So exactly, exactly, because it's it's a journey. You know, life is about a journey, and and that journey has peaks and valleys, and that's just the truth. And I just thought it was so interesting that we would be talking today, just because hair has been so. It's been at the 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 center point of like just the experiences that I'm feeling like as a woman. You know what I mean? Because even to say I'm not gonna put my wig on and I'm gonna wear my natural 4c curls out the door that's a that is a that's a statement you know and and um especially for for black girls who grew up um not learning to love their hair and being taught the opposite right that it's unmanageable that it's unpresentable like all of those things you know i had a relax on my hair when i was four years old yeah four. no one understand like unless you're in the position it's like you don't understand what comes with wearing my hair like this. Like when I go to predominantly Caucasian neighborhoods, mm -hmm. they're looking, which is fine. Right. But along with that comes, they don't know what it takes to maintain it. They don't know exactly. when I was, I hated my natural hair. My mom, I didn't have a relaxer, but I had uh, was in the shop every two weeks just burning my hair. Yep, getting it pressed. Not knowing, you know, the knowledge behind it. So yes, a statement for me to just throw the wig off like I don't even like this and I want to just resonate with who I am and I right. want to embrace you know my hair in whatever state it's in exactly and that's not to say that I don't love a good wig every now and then I still even these days I throw a wig on for sure it's just to say that I wanted to learn what it was like to feel just as beautiful if not more now right with my natural hair that sprouts out of my hair the way that it does you know, rather than just putting on, you know what I mean, a wig or putting on putting that on. I just wanted to to know what that was like. And um it's 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 so freeing. It really is. So when I saw that, I was just like, oh wow, this is so much yeah. alignment to see that that was what I used to grow up seeing. You know what I mean? Like that was the the visuals I saw when I was like, I wanna look like that. Like her hair is late, like for real. Kids, kids yeah. nowadays don't know what it's like to look through the magazines and see those styles. It's just elaborate, crazy styles, like laid to precision. Right. No, everyone went to it for a reference. 
And then I love that everyone has a different story. Like, right. yes, and we saw what we wanted out of the magazine. But also, like you said, you you had a relaxer. You were four. You had no care in the world. But your mama was like, I can't deal with her hair. I'm going right. to put it relax. Exactly. We can all relate in some kind of way of like, yes, I know that pain. I know, like, mm -hmm. feeling like somebody always telling you, like, oh, your hair nappy. When it's like, no, it's not really nappy. It's just we have to find ways to maintain it. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. Exactly. Or, the girl, the worst one is when people be like, you getting your hair done? Why you don't think it's but done? How? Why it's not done? You know, like, it, it's done. It's done in this puff. It's done. <laughs> It's good it's for that. It's like, oh, baby, what you doing with your hair? Girl, if you paying for it, then you can ask these questions. Exactly. But exactly. I'm doing, this is what it is. Right. I just, it's almost like, yeah, it, but it definitely is, it plays a big role. I realize now that hair plays such a big role in even my creative process, you know? Like, that's why I realized I had to remove. It was, it was about removal and stripping down because that I was like, what comes next has to be just that honest and um, that bold. And the only way to do that is to face yourself. So the truth is real. I mean, duh, but like it, when you sit with it, when you're right. able to like take in the things that, you know, when we were younger, like I, because I was at the shop so much, I didn't have a chance to be real about my natural hair. I didn't acknowledge a lot of that right. stuff. A lot of black girls, We didn't know it. We didn't we even didn't. know it. And people always was just, like, attacking us for having, like, our hair undone. Or, mm -hmm. or like, I don't know how you feel about it, but the comment Monique made the other day about wearing bonnets at the airport, I like to be comfortable. I right. Love my, I leave the house with it on, too. I feel like people gotta stop worrying about other people. I just, I personally don't understand why it matters like I, i'm just being so for real right now i really don't understand how you can see somebody minding their business wearing Anybody? whatever makes them comfortable right and think to yourself they need to not do that because it makes me uncomfortable look away <laughs> <laughs> it don't make me uncomfortable i um yeah but you know what in my household like my family was like that too like the boys can't wear a do-rag outside to take the trash out. The girls can't wear a bonnet outside. I don't understand it, though. I just feel like it's, what's the, how is it not the same as a beret or something like that? You know what I mean? I don't know. And then no. if it's protecting my edges, I don't want nothing to be said to me. Because I definitely wear a scarf to the gym to keep yeah. the edges tied down. So the airport is a journey by itself. I'm going to immediately put my bonnet on. I'm never in clothes. Like, I'm always, like, baggy clothes or something comfortable. And then also, I feel like, Monique, you had your nerve because when she did her little PSA, she was in her little nightgown. So how can you say See, Right. You know right. I mean? If we're going to go there, we got to take it all the way across the board. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. But, um, yeah, that's my take. I feel like that, let people uh, wear, they, wear what they want to wear. And look right. away if you don't like it. I don't <laughs> look away exactly. Look away. I never understand that girl. Why people are so bothered. Um, right. So for your future well, for your EP or do we have any more visuals coming out? Or and when can we expect your next uh So not next for not for girls. Um I think for now the girls the, the chronicle of the girls, they're Is... they're they're resting, they're chilling right now. Um, but I'm work. I'm definitely cooking up new stuff right now. I don't have a date to like let anyone know because every time I say a date and then I don't abide by it, I get bullied. So I'm gonna just say <laughs> I don't have a date. I just um, I definitely am cooking up though. I'm cooking up a lot of cool stuff and working on a lot of cool opportunities. Um, you know, films and different things like that too. So. Well, I'm excited. I will keep my notifications on. Yes, um, girl. I'm glad I'll... that we got to connect, too. We got to stay in touch, especially now I know you're in L.A. Because I be usually in L.A. You know, quite a bit. Hit me up, girl. I'm here. I, okay. I know. If anything, I can show you where the food is at. And girl, listen, definitely... but why I'm thinking about food right now. I was going to say, I wonder if she ever ate a Grill Fresh. You eat a Grill Fresh? I, I haven't had Grill Fresh, but I've go I mean, I, I'm a foodie. 
Okay, so, I'm a foodie too. If we need to try stuff together, I got you. Like I always eat at Grill Fresh, so I know. Like first of all, Grill Fresh is delicious. Okay, um, but I also um, know that I need to try other things as well, in addition to Grill Fresh. It's a lot of bomb stuff out here. We could it'd take us all day, but I got you. So okay, girl. Come to but LA. I'll definitely be keeping, um, you know, just keeping you up to date and stuff, and making sure to. Send you because I, girl, I always have some gifts for the girls, so I make sure I keep you in mind too and send you some stuff. No, and then whenever something is releasing, just hit me and we'll post it on here and you know keep keep in contact. So I appreciate you being on. Awesome, that. of course, because I gotta get you a bag too. I gave a few girls some hoe bags when the album came out. Let me get mine in with a bonnet in it, girl. I I got a big satin bonnet that you could fit all your beautiful curls in. I'm ready. You know I'm what ready. I'm saying? So you could be prepared. You know, you just never know when you need it. So I have it in my car. Yes, girl. I'm gonna give you something you can keep your car a little cute pink bag, real discreet. But thank you, girl. I'm no glad I met. Hate you. Have a good one. See you. Bye.